Okay, we're gonna make a damper again this morning. Uh, this one's gonna be uh, a corned beef and corn with cheese topping damper. So we've got some corned beef in here. Uh, I'm actually gonna be using some cream corn in it. I'm just gonna use the plain damper recipe, which consists of four very, very carefully measured cups of self-raising flour. Um, the tablespoon of icing sugar and about half a teaspoon of salt and I'm weighing that so that's definitely half a teaspoon very accurately measured in mix up those dry ingredients okay so now we need to add any other dry ingredients we want to add so we're going to add some meat I'll just chop that up Look at that, beautiful bit of corned beef left over here. Get my knife. I'm just gonna slab this up, it doesn't really matter whether it be thin or thick. You want a bit of a variety actually, I like it. I like to have, uh, when I'm doing veggies and things, I like to do some chunky, some real small, cause some will break up and go into a stock. Same with the corned beef on this damper, I want chunky bits, I want little tiny bits. Um, just so it evens out through all the batter and. You're always getting that little bit of a hit somewhere, no matter where you bite it. Oh, this is lovely looking corned beef here. Chop it up. There we go. I'll leave a couple of nice big chunky bits like that. Right down to small bits like that. Right, that goes in. Chucking in the Tucking in that, put that over here now. Mix that in. Time for the cream corn. Beautiful looking stuff, isn't it? Love it. Just drop that all in there. Okay, so I've added the cream corn in and the water's to go in yet because the cream corn is going to add to the moisture content of the batter. So I need to add the cream corn and then bring the batter up to the correct moisture content with the water. So I can't put the water in first and then the cream corn because it'll just be too wet and take ages to cook. So I'm gonna mix that in there now. It looks good already, but probably shouldn't eat it when it's raw. Get that fairly evenly mixed through. Now, just before I do anything else, I'm just gonna get some flour, a handful of flour, just like that. And I'm gonna take it over there and put it in the camp oven. Uh, that's sitting on some coals and we'll see what sort of a color that comes up to because we want to get a nice tan color on the bottom of the camp oven okay so i'm just going to dust the floor of the camp oven with a little bit of flour and that'll just that's just to cushion the damper batter from the metal on the floor otherwise if i put a wet batter on that metal i'll be frying it so that flour is going to give me a bit of a cushion but it's also going to be, uh, by the changing of the colour of it, it'll tell me how hot that floor is. So if it goes real black, I know it's a bit too hot. Um, but I'm going to get it a nice gold brown, and then I'll know it's be safe to put my damper batter on that flour. What I've actually done is, a few minutes before I even started doing this, I got a good shovel of coals and ash out of the fire and sat it there where the camp oven's going to work. Um, just so that it has time to come off that peak heat and settle down a little bit. And I've sat the oven on it so that it comes up with temperature. Um, it takes time to get to an even heat. If you just get it shoveled straight out, put it on the ground and put your camp oven on it, it's going to be very, very hot to start with, especially with this gidgy sort of wood that we're using. Um, yeah, so I've actually given myself a bit of a buffer zone, Add the, put the ash and the coals on the ground, sit the camp oven on it, wait for five minutes, and then add the flour on it. It should be pretty good temperature to start cooking with. Uh, we don't really need a lot of heat under it, even cooking a damper. Most of the baking is going to be done from the top down. 
Okay, so we're mixing this cream corn in to get it nice and evenly mixed through. There's something about the name of this corn beef and corn. Corn beef and cream corn damper. It's a bit of a tongue twister. But, uh, but it's funny how corn beef and corn goes together so good. So we're gonna add little bits of water at a time. Out of my little teacup there. I'm just going to use my, my spoon at the moment to mix it in. I don't want to get my hands messy, that's the main reason. I've got my knife there, I probably should be using it. I'll go back to using my knife. I always use this knife. It's my lucky grandmother's knife, I call it. It's a very old fashioned knife, but I've used this knife for as long as I can remember for making dampers. Um, but the reason I use a knife is so that I'm cutting air into the damper batter. If you use your hands, you can push that air out and it makes it a bit flatter. So I'm cutting air in while I'm mixing. And the other reason is, I use it to tell when I've got the perfect amount of moisture in there because as soon as it grabs the knife and follows around one lap, I know that I've got the right amount of moisture in my bowl. A little bit more water. Tilt him up now so he can pick up all the crumbs. It's wanting to come together now. I'm not going to add any more moisture. I think this is enough. I just need to cut it in a bit more. I'm just wanting to get the damper batter to hold itself in one lump, which might be a bit difficult for all this corned beef in it and basically follow the knife, and I think that's going to be enough anyway. Here it is. So that's going to roll around on my knife there now like that. No problem. That's one lump. So there we know. We've got enough. The perfect amount of moisture is in that damper batter for cooking. You don't need to add any more. So I'm just going to bring it to a shape. I'll cut it in with my knife a little bit. This is the technique I'm using and all my dampers. I cut it in with a knife that aerates it and I roll it until I add water and roll it around with a knife until it grabs the knife and that, I do that to every single damper so that way it doesn't matter if I'm making a two cup damper, a four cup damper or a ten cup damper at the same amount of moisture content in the batter it'll grab that knife every time so every one I make is, is as damp as the last one which is uh, fantastic when you're trying to get perfect cooking times so you don't have them in the ovens too long and start getting those real thick hard crusts. Alright, so this is ready to go. So I'm just going to flour up my hands and bring it together. Right, yeah, I've got that to a nice shape now. Flatten him out. You can see the corn and the corned beef are all pretty much evenly cut through it. I'm just going to go back over and check how the, um, the flour is going in the camp oven and see if I've got the temperature right for the base. The cracked concrete look that you're looking at there, that is the perfect starting point for the flour on the floor of the camp oven. Uh, that's stage one. Stage two, would, it would be colouring up to a light tan. Stage three, it would be colouring up to a dark tan. Stage four is probably on fire, not recommended for putting a damper on that. Uh, stage one is very good. Put it on there, it's actually still warming up, so it'll probably come up to stage two and you know go to a light tan color. Uh, what you're looking at is a mirror reflection of what the bottom of the damper batter is gonna look like. I'm using that flower as a color chart, color guide, and temperature gauge, if you might. Uh, so there's no guesswork involved. I never burn the bottoms of my damper, because I know what they're going to look like already. I use that flour in there to tell me. So that's colouring up quite nicely, nice and gently. So I'm happy with that floor. The only job the heat underneath that camp oven has to do is to brown that flour and cook the base on this damper. It doesn't have any other job. All of the baking is actually done from the top. So you don't need much under there, just enough to brown that flour up and put enough heat there to give you a little bit of a crust under there. So think about that. Uh, not too much underneath your camp oven when you're cooking dampers. Okay, I'm going to put this in there now, and we're going to top him off with a bit of cheese. 
I've sat my damper in the camp oven ready to go. But because I've got some corn, uh, cream corn, and because I've got corned beef in there, I've made it a little more dense than just a normal one. Uh, I've cut it in with a knife, so it's aerated a bit, but I'm gonna stab some holes in it for some steam shoots, and that will help with the rise. Uh, with all that other density that I've got going on in there, it needs all the help it can get. And it will rise, so I'm gonna put a cross on it to help it rise in a nice pattern and not just tear itself apart as it comes up. So I'll do that now. Okay, so we've got our damper in there, corned beef, cream corn, and cheese damper. Just gonna put the lid on it now, get some heat on the top, uh, and check the clock, I'll give it about 35, probably 40 minutes with that one. At a nice gentle heat, I don't wanna blast it too hard because it's got cheese on it, I don't wanna burn the cheese, I wanna cook it slowly, gently over time. So I'll go and do that now. We're gonna cook that damper now for about 35 to 40 minutes, probably 40 minutes because I've got a few extra things going on there. Uh, normal standard damper would have been 35. Yeah, I'm, I'm tipping 40 minutes at a nice slow pace. It'll come up nicely and get that beautiful gold color on top. And that's gonna make for a very fine morning tea. How do you make a damper? There's a hundred recipes out there, probably a thousand recipes out there. It's basically just flour, salt and water uh, in a combination. You can add some baking powder to make it rise. If you don't add any and it's plain flour, it won't rise. Self-raising flour is easily accessible these days, so that's all I worry about using. Uh, as far as the recipe goes, you can be pretty general. You know, it's a few cups of this and, and a pinch of that will do it. It doesn't have to be exactly so many cups and exactly so many teaspoons or tablespoons. Uh, it's not that crucial. Okay, I've got the cream corn, corned beef and cheese damper out of the camp oven. I'm just going to slice him up now and have a look and see how he looks in the inside. Oh, the smells coming out of here are amazing. Okay, how does that look in there? That looks pretty good to me. Lovely lumps of corn beef, there's flecks of corn all through it. The damper batter itself has taken on a, a yellower, yellowy sort of a um, com, com, uh, complexion. Oh yeah, look, on bags in this bit over here, there's not much corn beef over in that bit, but that's all right. Very nice, this is gonna be lovely. Okay, so what I've done is I've put my camp oven over here on some coals, and I've just let those coals sit for five, six minutes until they sort of the blasting heats come off them. Uh, and I've walked over a bit later and I've put in a handful of flour and I've just let that brown off and tell me what temperature that camp oven is. I haven't rushed anything. I'm not rushing over there to throw the batter into the camp oven. I just want to wait until I've got that bottom temperature just right. I just want it just hot enough to be able to brown a bit of flour, that's all. And then I've taken my damper batter over and I've sat it on there, put the lid on, put the, some cooking heat up on top, Check me clock, giving it a good 40 minutes. Uh, wandered away, had a cup of tea or whatever I did, a beer. <laughs> Came back after about 40 minutes, lifted the lid, and this is what we've got. Corned beef, cheese, and cream corn damper. 